Hi, my name is Madeline Perez. I'm a senior fellow here at Constructs. Um, I just came back uh, from teaching developer testing um, at a communications client in California. And uh, in this class, we uh, share a large number of techniques um, that improve uh, building quality in the software. And one of them that actually was kind of very uh, attractive to this client was pairwise testing. And you can imagine a communication companies, they have any number of factors involved in establishing communication or when they build, you know, those uh, micro components that go into your cell phone. Um, if you like to test this uh, sufficiently, you like to have good coverage. But testing everything is impossible. We know that. And that has been already discussed, um, you know, in great detail in many books. Uh, so essentially, very wide testing means that when we have a large number of combinations of factors, let's say that we have something like this, imagine that we're talking about different operating systems, different databases, different browsers, and we would like to test as much as we can all of those combinations to make sure that uh, the system will work properly, that you will not have any configuration issues. Um, that number start getting really big, and if you think about putting together all those configurations, it's going to be expensive. So with pairwise testing, what we can do is to reduce that number significantly and still get good coverage. Um, so, and this is based on research. Um, after doing some research in different fields, they have learned that most of the problems we find in software is usually because of one single factor or be between two factors, some conflicts between two factors. So what that means is that maybe we don't need to test all the combinations, all possible combinations. We can reduce and just test every pair of factors. So we can go from, let's say if we have this scenario, we have three possibilities for each one of these factors. If we like to test everything, that means that we need to have three by three by three, 27 test cases if we like to test all possible triplets. Now, how can we reduce this and still have good coverage? Applying this idea of pairwise or all pairs, that's another name for it. What we can do is to start combining these factors. So I can have A, alpha, and one, that could be one test case. Here, I'm testing the pairs of A and one. I'm testing the pairs of A and alpha. I'm testing also alpha and one. Again, imagine that we're talking about operating systems, this would be Android, and this could be maybe the browser we're, we're testing against Safari, and this would be maybe a network protocol, protocol uh, to kind of refer to that particular client. Um, now you can have another scenario which you go A, beta, and two. So now we're gonna be testing two other pairs. And I keep going like this. I can start combining now A with gamma and three, and at some point you can start basically taking another instance of this factor. Now I'm taking B, so maybe I'm testing now iOS, uh, Mac OS, uh, OS. So, and, and now we're gonna be combining B, alpha. I cannot have B, alpha, and one because that is already being tested. Alpha and one is already taken, so I don't need to test that one again. So I just need to have another pair that I haven't tested, so that's why I'm saying B, B alpha, and two. Now I have B and two being tested, B and alpha being tested, alpha and two being tested. So I can keep going like this, and you're gonna need only nine test cases to test all the pairs. Now, if you have a large number of factors, let's say that you have, I don't know, nine factors, and each factor is taking three possibilities, then we're talking about 20,000 test cases. You can go from 20,000 test cases to 15 test cases. And I usually present this using a tool, and this is how I like you to do it. Uh, doing this by hand could be error prune and you know consume too much of your time. So there are tools available that you can use by introducing these factors into their system. They can generate this, um, I would say, test inputs that you're gonna have uh, combining this factor using this approach of all pairs, and ensuring that you have that consistency. Um, that's something I will do. A tool that I would recommend you to use is called ACT, and it's freely available, and you can download it, and you can use it. You can instrument the system that you wanna generate this um, inputs for, and also it allows you to uh, explicitly say some constraints. 
So one thing that some people will say, what if we like to test a particular triplet that this is not being considering? One thing that you can do is to basically add those specific triplets that you like to test. Like it could be in a specific configuration, you know, it's gonna be very common and you like to make sure that that test is being considered. So you can either tell the system, in this case the tool, say this is one triplet that I want to be to have part of the, the output and they can do that for you or you can essentially take the output and add those additional uh, test cases that you like to have. Keep in mind that this is just the input. It's not officially a test case. For, for this to be a test case, we need to have an expected output. But this is, I would say, the most problematic and time-consuming part that you're getting out of the tool doing this analysis. So I think it's a very powerful technique because you can have sufficient good coverage. You can have 80% coverage with a significantly reduced number of test cases. So try to practice, try to find in your system. For sure you have different factors that are involved in the system that maybe you didn't even expect that they will fail at some point um, in a given configuration. Uh, you can do this reducing those test cases and get good coverage.